One of the things I wanted to find out about this strategy, about the zero days to expiration arm fly, was what the typical loss would be if we hit our stop loss. So let's quickly go through the uh, structure of the trade. At the beginning of the day, basically at the open, when there is a zero days to expiration option for SPX, so this is only on SPX, you sell basically a straddle right at the at the money. So for example, today it was at 3090, so 3090. And then you buy some wings at a, at a specific predetermined distance from the short options and we make them equidistant so we don't care about skew we don't care about nothing we just take the uh where the short options are and we subtract a predetermined amount in this case i've used 70 dollars because that's a number that i saw a lot of traders were using today so 30 90 minus uh 70 it would be 30 20 and 30 90 plus 70 would be 31 60. so what i decided to do was um, if we assume that we're going to use the the, uh, the methodology that pretty much everybody's using, which is you put it on right at the open, and then as soon as you get a dollar and fifty cents of profit, you take it off, and the uh, stop loss would be when it hits the uh, uh, a point where the um, the price of SPX is uh 3090 minus the credit received or 3090 plus the credit received so we're going to have a uh, an arm fly where the add the money is going to be right in the middle and then we're going to have the uh the break even or the would be break evens at expiration as our stop losses right here so it would be for example if we receive $30 of credit, then we would have the stop loss points at 3090 plus 30 and 3090 minus 30. Okay, so what I decided to do is I wanted to see how these numbers were changing and what will happen if you hit the stop loss at a, at a certain time in the morning, during the morning, and see how big that loss would be. Okay, so what I did was I took all this information I basically built a uh, an option calculator by using the uh, Black Scholes model, and uh, remember this is purely theoretical. I'm not getting any information from the market. I'm just calculating it, and because it's one day, it's very clean, it's very clear. There's no dividends, there's nothing. It's only one day to go, so today, and it's easy to calculate the uh, the theoretical value. It's the same thing you would find in any online option calculator. Okay, now of course we have certain restrictions here. Okay, I'm assuming that we have a constant implied volatility throughout the day. I'm assuming that there's no skew, which is not true, but just to get the calculations. I don't want to get accurate numbers. I want to get a good feel for uh, where the stop loss would be or what the loss would be if we hit our stop loss. Because we know what's going to happen if, uh, if, we, if this trade is profitable. It's going to be anywhere between a dollar and a half and uh, two dollars okay so I wanted, I wanted to see every time we lose how much are we gonna lose okay so I'm going to replicate this valuation based on the Black Scholes model okay so the uh, the restrictions again constant volatility no skew no slippage and no transaction fees of course all of these are uh, unrealistic but still they're gonna give us a good feel for uh, how much those losses would be and especially how they behave throughout the morning So if we start looking at the data what I've done is I've taken the whole trading day and I've, and I've chopped it up into five minute periods. So I'm going to be uh, Evaluating the uh, long put short put short call and long call. So the value of the iron fly Every five minutes and remember this is purely theoretical, but it should be very close to reality Okay, I just want to see how the value of the uh, iron fly is changing if the price for example if the price doesn't move too much okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to evaluate the same thing assuming that we um, get stopped out on the short side and on the long side and i'm going to get some information to get a feel for uh, at which point during the morning i'm going to start seeing profits or if I get stopped out at a certain point during the morning, how much am I going to lose? 
So what I did was I applied the, uh, the Black Scholes model here and I am calculating the values as time is passing every five minutes. And what you just start seeing here is, for example, the uh, theoretical value of this. And remember, we're not, uh, we're not considering slippage, skew, transaction fees, etc. If we start with a value of around $30, and don't pay too much attention to this, just, just focus on the, um, on the actual how it starts moving. OK, um, and if nothing happens every five minutes, I'm going the, this this iron fly is going to start uh, going down in price. So it's going to start giving us profits. Right. So I'm assuming that the price is not moving or it's moving very little here. It's still within the range of the uh, iron fly with a profitable range right here. OK, so as time starts passing and you got five minutes, four, uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes after you start making money, 66 cents, 83 cents. So the first interesting um, finding right here is that since I'm going to, uh, because I'm not considering transaction fees, slippage and all of that, I want to see at which point do we collect the $1.50 that we are shooting for. And in this case, I'm going to go for $2 of, of profit just to account for slippage, transaction fees, etc. Okay, so we can see that this happens. Remember, this is only purely theta uh, taking, uh, taking action on the price of the iron fly and reducing it and therefore giving us profit. So this happens theoretically at around one hour after you put it on. So if nothing happens, you put it on and volatility doesn't change. Now, if volatility starts going down, that's going to help you, of course. OK, and, and later on, we'll, we'll talk about how volatility affects the whole the whole all the different scenarios. But in this case, this is just you put it on. How long do you have to wait to collect a dollar and a half? And I'm going for 208 just to account for slippage, etc. And it should be one hour. So by 1030, you should have that money, which kind of lines up with uh, what we've seen and what we've seen traders report in this uh, or by using this trade. OK, now what happens if you get stopped out on the downside? OK, so you hit the uh, stop loss. What's the value of the iron fly? So how much are you going to lose? OK, so if you hit it right away, so let's say after five minutes, it just goes straight down and you have to you have to you have to close your iron fly. Then your loss is going to be around six dollars and twenty eight cents. OK, and of course, if, if this same thing happens later on, you're going to start losing less. So the longer you stay in the trade, even if you get stopped out, your loss is going to be less. Now, remember, volatility is an important component here, because if price starts going down, chances are volatility is going to start going higher. And that's going to give us an additional component of losses. But here, let's just focus on volatility being constant and just the effect of theta versus being stopped out on the downside. At this point during the morning, how much am I going to lose? OK, so I've calculated all these numbers. So if you get stopped out, for example, at 11 o'clock, so an hour and a half after you put it on, you're only going to lose four dollars and sixty five cents. OK. And if you get stopped out by uh, 12 o'clock, so by noon, then you're going to lose three thirty nine. So the uh, loss that you're going to get when you get stopped out, of course, depends on at which point during the morning you are stopped out. I've also calculated the, the numbers for the call side, which are very similar and uh, Again, we're going to discuss the uh, the effect of volatility a little bit later, but basically the effect of um, so basically being stopped out on the upside is pretty much the same as being stopped out on the downside. So it's something that I kind of suspected, but just seeing the numbers and applying the formulas, the uh, the uh, theoretical formulas just confirmed that. So if you get stopped, if you get stopped out, for example, at uh, 11 o'clock, so an hour and a half after you put it on, then you're going to lose around four dollars. OK, so now you have a good um, a good uh, point of comparison or a good um, 
yardstick as to um, as to what your loss could be if you get stopped out. Okay. Now I've taken all this information, I put it in a, into a chart, and this is I think a little bit clearer to see. Now these two lines are pretty much the same because the the loss because the losses because of the of being stopped out on the put side and on the call side are pretty much the same. Okay, and this line. So basically, this line is how much you're gonna lose as the day is uh, is um, is passing in the morning, 9:30, 10 o'clock, 10:30, etc. So as you can see, it depends on when when you get stopped out. Is it's going to determine the uh, size of your loss, and also it 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 depends on when you take off your trade that it's going to give you the profit so this is the profits the profitable line and this is the losses okay so as you can see if if you are able to to survive until 11 o'clock for example even if you get stopped out after the loss is more than manageable because couple couple more uh profitable trades and you're gonna wipe it out now if you if you get one of those uh losses that's right at the beginning then the loss could be considered a little bit uh, bigger because now it's going to be around six dollars which is the number that i that i've consistently found that happens uh right at the beginning now the profits if the price behaves and stays in range then as you can see you can wait and collect more profits but of course what you want to do is reduce risk and one hour after so 10 30 you should have enough profits to uh to just close the trade and uh, live the fight another day, okay? Takeaways. Number one, the max loss is around $6 right at the beginning of the day. So if you're very unlucky and you uh, put it on and right away it moves against you and it goes and hits the uh, stop loss, which as we said is the, uh, the strike price where the uh, short options are, plus and minus the credit received, okay? So it's around six dollars and if it starts going down as time goes on and number two if the volatility is constant and actual price movement is small the two dollar profit a two dollar profit so let's say 150 considering slippage and everything should be available on in one hour on average now another thing usually uh, if volatility is the same, these are the numbers that are going to play out. That's that's exactly the way it's going to play out. But of, of course, volatility is not the same. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. And sometimes during the same day, it starts going up and then down. So you have to consider that as well. And uh, although skew shouldn't change that much, the skew should remain constant. It's just it's going to shift. The value of IV is going to shift higher or lower but the skew itself what's the difference is it's not going to get steeper or um or flatter so um i don't think skew is, is too, too big and uh, a component but implied volatility is if if volatility starts going down right away after you put it on of course you're going it's it, it's going to simulate that is that is accelerating time so it's going to give you profits much much faster if volatility starts going up and higher then it's going to be a drag on your profits and you're going to have to wait for longer so it all depends on volatility and from what i've seen i've just looked at the information over the last month there seems to be no pattern i've seen volatility uh open high and then go low and then open low and go constantly high and then i've seen open i've seen it open and then go higher and then go lower and then stabilize i've seen it stabilize and then go crazy right at the end of the day so there seems to be no pattern so uh, i think it's important that that if we think of this trade that we understand when in when and where our profits are coming from okay so I, so i hope that uh, this is a little bit helpful and uh, leave me your comments and as to what I can do to improve this uh, this kind of um, simulation, and uh, I hope that it's uh, helpful somehow. Thank you.